I scream, you scream, we all scream because we're in hell. Also, there's metal ice cream trucks, uh, but they don't have ice cream. This is Last Words here in the pit. Ah! Welcome to another episode of Last Words here in the pit. I'm your host, Jordan Olds, and my quarantine hair is time traveling me back to 2003, I guess. And I'm here with Travis Riley and Katie Irizarry. How you guys do? You okay? I'm still here. I haven't left this spot since the last time you saw me here. I've just been here this whole time. I've been working my way around the apartment, but mostly it's just here, yeah. And we have a special guest this week from Asking Ooh. Alexandria. We got Ben Bruce. Ben, how you doing? I am really <laughs> bored. And I know you have to beat that word out, so I'm sorry. You just released an album, a new album, but you it's we're in the quarantine. That's gotta be insane. Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Uh, and we were told not to do it because first week sales wouldn't be good. And I'm like, do people still buy albums? Does it matter? Are they ever going to be good? I don't think so. You know, everyone's at home streaming music. Let's let's release some music. And I was like, okay, I think it's a stupid idea. And I'm like, you're stupid. We're releasing the record. And we released it. And it's it's done really, really well. That's awesome. People are home. They have time to listen to music. But it's also got to be strange to not be on the road for the first time ever supporting your album. That's what sucks. That really sucks. So I just had my third kid and I was actually supposed to miss the birth. I was supposed to be in Philly the night my, my son was born. But because the tour got postponed or cancelled, I was home. So that's really nice. It's nice being able to be home and spend time with my wife and kids. But I was talking to my manager today and I'm like, oh, well, the album just came out and that's the cycle done. What do we have? What are, what are we doing now? We have nothing to do. I was like, normally you release a record. And it's like, cool, we've got two years of touring. This is going to be great. We've just released a record and, you know, I can recite all the words from every kid's show ever. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just sat here watching crappy TV. I could do an hour on that so too. I may as well just go and make another record, I reckon. I think that's the way forward. Just keep releasing music. That's what I was going to suggest. Like, all right, well, when in Rome, just make more music. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, it is weird. It's it's a little bit strange. And it is upsetting because I, I feel like we write songs for the live environment too. Like there's there's nothing worse than going to see a band. It just doesn't come up together live. You know, it's, it's mm-hmm. like... There was too much in the record. So we, we focused really hard on how is this going to be presented live? How's it going to work? What energy is this going to throw out into the crowd? And so we wrote this album like, yes, I can't wait to tour this. And then God or Jesus or whoever the hell people believe in just was up there like. <laughs> people are doing uh, like live stream concert. Have you thought about ways to dip your toe into that? I've thought about it and not for very long because I hate it. <laughs> I hate that idea. It's like our, our vocalist has been doing it, which, you know, fair enough. That's fine. And, and apparently people are logging in and enjoying it. But for me, the best part about performing live is the energy you get from from the crowd. And it's kind of just seems a little bit self-indulgent. Imagine if you were like, do you want to have sex or do you want to wank on your own in the bedroom? Oh, I'll have a wank. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. It's boring. <laughs> You know, and so I don't know. It's just not my thing. And I'm sure I'll be eating my words soon enough because that's probably what all touring is going to be like virtual touring or something at some point. But just know I would much rather be on a stage. You know, people are trying to do performances, but it's hard to make it feel like it isn't a concert with half of a concert missing, which is an audience. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be. I think we're just, you know, it's people trying different things or ways to make it something different than a concert, but that's going to take a lot of time. Yeah, and I think that people were were under the assumption that this wasn't going to go on as long as, it, as it's gone on. So they're like, oh, to, you know, before we get back to normal, like we'll do a couple of like acoustic things on Instagram Live and then and then we'll go on tour. And now it's like, you that's know. That's totally what's happened. Week, week 10 of like, hey, tune in to Instagram Live where I'm, Again. Yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> you just screwed it. It's not a tour, man. Like you've just you've done it once and everyone that wants to see you has come in and watched you from all around the world. So I don't know, it's just it, it is it's definitely a it's a strange time. And then I think I've heard that they're toying around with the idea of when they do reopen venues, a three thousand cap room, they're gonna allow like six hundred people in it. I'm like, whoa. You're going to social distance a rock show? There's going to be a 3,000 capacity venue with 600 people dotted around it? Like, what? I mean, I don't want to do that at all. I don't know if you saw those weirdo suits, like, on Loudwire today. Um, Loudwire earlier this week, there was an article that 
scientists now have this prototype do the suit, suit thing. Yeah, what was do that? The suit. Do the suit. If it means shows can come back, oh, we'll sell them at the merch table. It'll be great. You'll get AA suits. <laughs> yeah, I'll 100% dress like I'm in C-Lab 20. 21. As a woman who has worn a one-piece bodysuit to a concert, you do not want to be drunk in a bathroom wrestling with that and having to pee. What if it comes with, with like a, a camelback inside it, yeah. and then when you get home, you empty it out? The least the least sexiest thing on earth, you, you go home after the show with somebody, and you got to both empty your camel bags into the bathroom. It'll just be normal for our kids. <laughs> they'll, they'll never know any different. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on from pee pants to trash talk. New trash talk song produced by Kenny Beats. What are we thinking, folks? I think it's, Kenny Beats did like Gucci Mane, right? I remember when I was a kid, Fall Out Boy um, did something similar with the Infinity on High Album. They went and worked with like Jay-Z and uh, Babyface and they worked with a bunch of hip hop producers and stuff too. And I think it's cool when like a, a rock or a metal band goes and works outside of the realms of rock and metal, some cool stuff can occur, you know? I think it's cool when you when a band does something that you don't expect, you know? I mean, at this point, I don't think people are, are totally caught off guard by Trash Talk doing this, considering that they have a history of touring with rappers and being signed to, you know, the Odd Future label and stuff. So speaking on with the mixing up producers and having a collaboration like that, we just saw that as well with Ozzy Osbourne. He just put out this record and he collaborated. Andrew Watt, who's worked with Post Malone. And like, I love seeing metal crossover and mix with other genres because to me, that's what's helping keep us healthy. That's what's helping bring new fans and breed new fans and breed the next generation of music. I think it's it's so important that you mention that too, because I feel like, especially in like the rock, but particularly the metal community, people get very headstrong on what a metal band should be and what they should do and shouldn't do. And all it does is keep the genre held down you know when when bands do stuff like this it does introduce more people to to stuff like that and when metallica back in the day released the black album and people went out in the streets and they like burnt their metallica merchandise well hang on a minute look what that's done now it's made metal music household you know it's 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 we're growing you know and i think it's so important and i think it's necessary and the li- the lines you know the last you know five eight years like the lines between like punk and hardcore and like rap are like blurred. It's like you go to like a rap show and it's like kids stage diving and like moshing and it's like. And look at Ghost Mane. Even today, like Ghost Mane is primarily a rapper and he has a black metal project now. Just released it. And it sounds incredible, I think. You know, we're, we're already talking about uh, hip hop, metal crossover. We're going to talk about Ice T's thrash metal band. Body count again. I love we're all Travis and I are always excited to talk about body count. It's <laughs> Ice T's thrash metal band. They aren't a hip hop metal band. They are just a metal band and they released a new video for their song Point the Finger with Power Trips Riley Gale. It's a it's a quarantine video. I feel like that, you know, it's kinda like, hey, you know, significant other roommate, here's my iPhone. Can you uh Film a few takes of me yelling and yelling in the woodshed, you know, <laughs> like yeah. like Riley's like in the woodshed with all these wacky tools and like a shotgun. I like it. I'm I'm stoked on it. We I mean we just did a quarantine video too, and I'm like, you know what? All these years we've been spending eighty, a hundred thousand dollars on a music <laughs> video, yeah. and we've just made one in our bedrooms at home. But I didn't even go the extra mile. I didn't get my wife to film me. I just propped mine up. I lent it against like a, a can of coke and lent it up and just went to town and then I moved it and did it again. So mm-hmm. I, I didn't even put that much effort into it. And it performs the same. Why are we wasting our money? You, you, could, you could own your own bus at this point if you would have just saved up all your music video budgets, right? You know, actually I did own my own bus once and it was the bus that the ghost inside got into that horrible accident on. Oh um, no! Yeah, yeah, that was my tour bus. Um, my, and um, Jim, the, the bass player, hit me up and was like, dude, because in the back I had a recording studio set up and my guitars were hanging along the wall. He was sleeping in the back lounge for some reason that night. It wasn't in his bunk. And when the bus went over, he said the guitar stopped him going out the window. He thinks the guitar hanging up saved his life. I was like, Whoa. Yeah. wow. But what happened to the guitar, Jim? He never gave me a new one. <laughs> well, uh, your bus was cursed, uh, but your guitar was blessed. Look at that! Wow. But anyway, back to back to body count. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to throw in a quick little a little blip about uh, in the so 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 Riley films it in his like garage woodshed thing, and then there's some footage in his living room. And in his living room, he has a, a sign 
behind him it says red blood club and it's like this this like kind of punk hardcore like venue that we used to play all the time in dallas and i love that he like when they closed down he like got the sign from the club and it's just hanging on his wall <laughs> that is pretty dope I, I love this video. I, first of all, Ice-T is a treasure and we just need to do everything to protect him. To yep. me, I just loved his intro at the beginning where he was so transparent. Like he was like, I'm not, this is exactly what happened. Like, I thought that was cool giving like a total like uh, raw look into like what went into it and his thinking process on it and just being so like candid. Like that was just super cool. And this video, look, people got to adapt it was a fun video um i think riley definitely made that video just sitting there at the shotgun in his woodshed like that was definitely pretty funny and pretty cool at the same time but yeah i'm really i dug this video um for sure i thought it was cool too i, I just like body count it's like and and yeah this is terrible this isn't supposed to sound like it's gonna come out but, but the video was fun and i feel like that's what body count is you know i i know that the message is serious and they take yeah. it seriously. But for me, when I listen to Body Count, it's just fun. And it's yeah. just yeah. cool. And the music is, is just, it's just cool. I don't need to think too much about it. Like we were on, Body Count was signed to the same label as us um, for a few years. So we've done a few tours and festivals with them. And Ice T is just, he's an awesome guy. And the band is awesome. It's like, it's just fun, you know? So how can you not like the video where, you know, it just, it goes hand in hand with what body count is to me. It's like, it's, it's, it's kind of thrown together. It's kind of DIY and it's just kind of awesome. I mean, look, I, I release pretty much a weird uh, filmed in my house music video every week with different musicians. And it's all you can do is just try. It's nice when you can throw, you can flash it up with like cool editing or whatever, but you can just see that these guys were just making the most of it. And that's all we ever can do. So good for you, Body Count. Uh, good for you, Riley. The song rips too. It's so cool. It is a good song. It is a good song. It's pretty on brand too for Body Count. Sad news, the tragic passing of Steve, the Slayer hippie Hanford, a poison idea. Um, that happened this week. The community is heartbroken. Yeah, they're super, a super influential band. Like, you know, like growing up on Long Island, uh, Kill Your Idols was a, a, you know, a big punk harper band for us. And yeah. they're very, very clearly, you know, influenced by Poison Idea. And you can kind of hear, you can kind of hear it in a, in a lot of bands, you know, of, of that ilk. But yeah, quintessential punk harper band. And yeah, it's a bummer. He was also uh, a great producer. It taught a lot of people how to do, how, how to, how to play instruments and record. He produced the Mondo Generator album we talked about a few weeks ago. He has touched every corner of aggressive music. It's really tragic when you just see someone who's overcome so much and really turned their lives around still be taken so young. Um, for those who don't know, he struggled with addiction. He was in rehab. He didn't even, he got thrown out of rehab because he was outside screaming and he woke Faith Hill up and that's why he was thrown out of rehab. Wow. Then he went to jail uh, for stealing. He was in jail for a while. And actually prison is kind of what led him down this path to write all this amazing music and uh, produce all these albums. Yeah. And it's just really sad when you see a story like that, someone who overcame so much adversity and who was so triumphant um, just to suddenly pass away that quickly and or not necessarily quickly, but that young. I mean, I loved... Uh like the way that Mark Lanigan spoke about him, he, uh, just about how it's, uh, you know, back in the day, he and Steve would fight all the time because of their their chaotic personalities. But, you know, it's, it's very clear to see the person uh, that Steve was through all of, uh, through everything that, you know, he eventually overcame. Do you have history with Poison Idea or Steve, really? No, I don't. I'd actually, um, I'd not, honestly, uh, maybe embarrassingly, I'd never, I've never heard of them. So I looked him up um, before coming to talk to you guys. And yeah, I was pretty, uh, like you said, he's, he's reached a lot of people in the, not just the music community, obviously his own life too. But I was reading, I found it really interesting that when he did go to prison, he used his time in there to sort of help other people find themselves through music and i think you know that's such an incredible thing and it's such a legacy to have left behind it's like okay we get dealt with cards all the time and you can either you know 
keep going down that same path and keep it up, or you can take that opportunity and, and run the opposite direction and have good come from it. And clearly that's something that, that this guy did. And, and obviously once he got out, carried on following through with that, that work that he, he set out and started in, in prison. So I think, you know, that's an incredible thing. There is a, an ice cream truck now that just goes around blasting heavy metal music and it doesn't have ice cream. What do we think? I'm obsessed with this story. I am obsessed. I've been seeing it pop up in my timeline over the uh, course of the past like 48 hours. And it's like this ice cream truck serves nothing but disappointment. And the best part is all the little kids that are just so excited. There's an ice cream truck and they run up and the guy just blasts them with metal and then drives away and like speeds away. There's like video footage like on TikTok or something of him like speeding down the block. And I just think it's so funny. It's so messed up, I know. But at the same time, I just think it's so It's funny. completely sadistic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I it, love it. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about you guys. Listen, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Some kind of I think... up aggression and anger towards ice cream trucks you've been harboring since childhood. Maybe. But uh, that could be, I'm, it, from what I read, that's what happened to him. So clearly yeah. it's traumatizing. Yeah. Why is he paying it forward? Life sucks, and they gotta toughen up. He's helping these kids. I think it's a good lesson for the little, for the, for the younger kids. Like, yeah, man, life, life's not fair. You know, you'll get an ice cream tomorrow, maybe, but, but not today, pal. But now he's, he's scaring kids away from metal music. Yes, that is, that is the biggest thing. Is like, I'm, I'm so not a fan of the, ugh, metal. I think that that's super dated and weird and like I I think the metal scene is just kind of different now. So even that aside, like I don't I don't I'm already not a fan of that behavior. We're in the middle of a court. What are you doing? Yeah. They're already sh we already have decided that the only ice cream trucks that are out right now are drug dealers. What are you doing? Why are you trying to bring children outside to be near each other? <laughs> You're, it's the last thing that you should be doing right now. I immediately thought of uh, the, the, the movie Friday where the, the, the ice cream truck driver, big, big worm, big perm. And I just picture it being like the, the, the heavy metal version of him, but, but not having anything to sell and just being mean to kids. <laughs> I'm picturing, do you remember that PlayStation game, Twisted Metal? Yeah. 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 I was always the ice cream truck. That, this guy is real life Twisted Metal. Yeah, well, look yeah. at this, though. You know, when I was a kid, all the things that terrified me, like horror movies and, like, witches and stuff like that, I've learned to embrace. So maybe it'll have the opposite effect where the kids are like, that was so cool. I was so scared. That was awesome. Because that's a real thing. You got to face, face your fears. Yeah. Face your fears of the ice cream man? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that anyone's afraid of the metal that they're hearing. I think they're more like, why the f didn't I get ice cream? Now I don't like Lamb of God. And that is the opposite thing to what Lamb of God do. Lamb of God give away all the free ice cream at all of their shows. So this is terrible yeah. news, guys. This is not good. Yeah, you're right. This week's new releases. All right, we got to talk about the new Old Man Gloom release, which is their primary release, which they released after their secondary release. Quarantine's been weird, everybody, but we gotta talk about Light of Meeting and Darkness of Being from Old Man Gloom. It's, uh, they're just companion albums of each other. Light of Meeting is uh, the main release from them, though. Do you, what did you guys think? Obviously, I loved it. I love the people in this band. I love what they do. What did you think? I was kind of confused because there were the two different records, so I was like, Oh, okay. Something, something's happening here. This one's going to be, you know, sound this way. And this one's going to be the answer to that one and the opposite. And then it was the same. So I didn't really know. <laughs> Why was it not just one long record? <laughs> but it, it, but it's long. It's what? It's like, it was, uh, it's like six songs in like 45 minutes, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. This, it, that was, that was crazy because normally it's like an album of, 20 songs will be 45 minutes now. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I didn't dislike it. It was just a bit of a hard listen for me. It's just like super, um, super noisy, like super noisy and just kind of like a lot of weird uh, interlude -y kind of stuff that felt like it went on for too long. I don't know. I, I just had a hard time kind of getting settled into it. Um, but like on paper, it's cool. It's like this, you know, awesome super group. So when I saw the band name, 
Old Man Gloom. I was like, oh, this is probably a doom band. But then I saw the album titles and presentation. And then I thought, oh, this might be a prog band. And it turns out it's both. And it also (laughs) has some like electronica mixed in there. And I don't hate it. It's definitely not what I expected. It's something I definitely had to give a few more listens. Um, There's a lot of stuff that was definitely really catchy and had me. And there's a lot of stuff that was just like, I don't really know what's going on here. Um, But it was still a pretty cool concept. And I appreciate any time a band can kind of just step outside the confines of these genres and really draw from other genres and make something their own. And they did it. They did that. And that was pretty cool. What Old Man Gloom is, is is, it's a super group uh, between Aaron Turner of Isis slash Sumac and... Uh, members of Cave In. Um, Nate from Converge, too. Yeah, Nate. Well, Nate's in Cave In now because uh, the, the biggest piece of this is that this was an album that was written by the late uh, Caleb Schofield. A lot of his songs are on this. So this is, you know, friends putting together their lost friends' ideas. Old Man Gloom is a band that needs context, I think, for the entire... Uh, for the entire experience, because it is it is a, a bizarre uh, sound, pretty much just like an experimental project of Aaron Turner and Caleb and the drummer Santos Montano. The musicianship was really cool. It's incredibly built. Darkness of Being, they really was supposed to be just a surprise uh, addition to the album, to Light of Meeting that was going to be the main album. And when the pandemic hit and things were really bleak for a lot of people, especially in their family of musicians, they kind of just released it as sort of a, an offering to try to, to help, just to help people with some art. So the order of the albums were released uh, like out of order. You have to read about why they released them in specific orders. There's a lot of there's a lot of why it's uh they're they're like the sound version of David Lynch like you're just listening to it and it's weird and you're like why did that happen for 45 minutes but I feel different about stuff let's talk about Black Rainbow's cosmic ritual super trip which is what I went on listening to Old Man Gloom but what did you think about this album I'll tell you what the album artwork's cool <laughs> <laughs> not, <laughs> not that the album's not. <laughs> the album that long cool. pause, then. <laughs> <laughs> I really loved the lighting. Oh, it was cool. I, hey, I, I, I thought it was, it was pretty cool. It was kind of like seventies rock and roll. Yeah. Sort of, in a modern day setting, I thought it was kind of cool. It might be my favorite of, of the releases this week. It's like super fu- like fuzzy and riffy. It reminded yeah. me of like, you know, Red Fang and like Orange Goblin and like even like a little bit of Sabbath in there. Yes, then, the opener, the At Midnight You Cry whatever. I was like, dude, this sounds like Black Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. and then there's like, um, like vocally sometimes it, it kind of has like corrosion of conformity vibe to it. But I thought it was yes. cool. And, and like you said, the artwork, actually, I think the theme for this week is all the releases have like really fucking cool artwork. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this definitely had really sick artwork. This was a super good, just like stoner rock record. Um, definitely like a feel good, just rock and roll kind of get stoned with your friends record, which I love, you know, just give me more of that. Give me that any any day, any time. So, but in my book, this is a solid record. Yeah, I thought it was cool. I'd never heard of them. And then when I, that first song came on and it reminded me of Black Sabbath, I was like, all right, this is cool. I'm going to listen to this. Yeah. Let's talk about... Cauldron Black Ram, Slaver. Pretty cool album, liked it. Black metal vibes, like a goblin voice. Uh, it had a lot going on, what do you guys think? It's really not my bread and butter, I don't, it's way heavier than something I would normally listen to. I listened to it and I can appreciate the musicianship and everything that went into it, but I, I didn't really get it. Like, I, I couldn't understand what the guy was saying, so that for me, part, I didn't know what the hell they were talking about. So, <laughs> but like I could appreciate the musicianship behind it. It's just not my, my thing. Yeah, this definitely falls under the sick album cover for sure. Um, and it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Ben was saying, it's definitely a little bit out of my wheelhouse too. But um, on their, on their, I wanted to just mention two things. On their Facebook, they're described as um, 
death death heavy metal, but it's one word, death and heavy, which I thought was a pretty cool genre that they may have invented. Death heavy what? Death death heavy metal. And then <laughs> I have to read this off a of paper because there's a song that is definitely a contender for title of the year. It is called <laughs> Smoke Pours from the Orifices of the Crematory Idol. <laughs> Hey, man. That was a great title. <laughs> that's not an ice cream truck that's been driving around. It's their tour bus. <laughs> yeah. I really like this album. It had a super, like, old school death thrash vibe with kind of like a little bit of like a first wave of black metal kind of vibe. Um, I really dug it. I, I just always enjoy when a band just gets kind of gritty and kind of throws it back a little bit. So this was definitely up my alley. All right, guys, let's talk about Wolf Tooth Valhalla. This, uh, to me, was the most, like, this is this is a, a metal album. This was very, very metal. Like, I, I put it on, and I was like, oh, okay, this is a metal album. And I was like, oh, pretty standard metal. But then the, the singer came, and I was like, is it, have I, I thought I put the wrong thing on. I swear to God, that was Ozzy Osbourne singing. Immediately, I was like... That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say, yes. I was like, I've done the wrong, I'm listening yeah. to the wrong album. But no, it was it was very reminiscent of like 80s Ozzy Osbourne. Like no rest for the wicked Ozzy, like Zach Wild era Ozzy. I got That's- that vibe from the whole album. And it wasn't what I expected. Like I see Valhalla, I see Wolfheart. The first song has something to do with Freed, which is the Norwegian goddess of war. Uh, and then the intro has like this like kind of, Ren fair kind of vibes. I'm like, oh God, what are we getting into right now? And then it just like goes right into it. And that is exactly my vibe the entire album. That's exactly what I was going to say that it sounds like Ozzy Osbourne, like No Rest for the Wicked, Zach Wilde era. The voice, everything. And I really dug it. It's like Ozzy and also like a dash of ghosts. So it's a little, it's a little modern and having a, having a lot of fun. Catchy choruses. I felt like it was like a little fantasy, like Dungeons and Dragons kind of metal, but but mixed with like Ozzy Sabbath, you know? That's because of his voice, though. Because I was the same. I was like, yeah, it's not really my thing. And then as yeah. soon as he started singing, I was like, oh, and now I have to like it because I love Ozzy Osbourne. And yeah. Then, and then there was like a, tra- a track called Fear for Eternity that like the intro is like super like thrash metal. And I was like kind of like taken off guard by it, you know? But it's cool. It's definitely like just a, it's a metal record, you know. Yeah. Should we talk about the album cover because it's sick. Because it's sick. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about this other sick album cover. It's got <laughs> a guy riding a dragon horse. You, I've seen a lot of flying horses in my day. But that's why I didn't think it was gonna sound like it did. I thought it. I thought it was gonna sound like a Twilightning album or something. I was like waiting for ba bam da bam dun 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 it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't it wasn't scary at all. To me, it sounded like uh, like like early two thousands metalcore and death from above, nineteen seventy nine, right? I had like ref- refused gallows and like stuff like went behind a church and did the nasty and and they birthed Baron Womb, but Baron but Baron Womb is not a death metal band, which I thought it was going to be a death metal. Yeah, band. me too, me band. too. But then you like the single that was it hair hair palms, I think it was called. It was like funky i was like there's no yeah, funk there, in Baron there was Loom. a couple songs where it just kind of went like real weird and it was kind of like hard to pin down what it was yeah but, i thought know, that was cool though i was like oh whatever these guys are doing whatever the hell they yeah, want to do they really got out there and do whatever they were yeah. like yeah what if we did uh converge but we had a dancey hi-hat <laughs> and i'm like yeah <laughs> the disco beat it was I, I had a really good time it felt like an album that i would have listened went to when i was in high school just like a weird uh, like band that just would have been in like the noise category. Yeah, I felt the same way. Like I, I, I had this really nostalgic vibe from it where I'm like, this is cool. It's like reminds me of something, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what. And I think that's what it is. It reminded me just of what I would listen to when I was in like high school and like a burgeoning like metalhead. Um, and same thing. I again, another band. I see the title. I see the band name. 
not what I expected. Yeah. yeah. All right. For the third time on the show, let's talk about Contra Cult Collective. It's the water. New single from them. It's industrial. It's a little more Rob Zombie than usual. What do you guys think? I was completely, you guys were saying that the Baron Womb was like, it took you back to high school days. That's what this did for me. I've never heard of this band at all. So I was like, okay, I'll put it on. And it immediately reminded me of like Murder Dolls meets Spine Shank. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, yeah. all right, I'm, I'm, uh, a Roadrunner Records back? Are they making a comeback with this band? What's happening right now? But it 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 took me. It was super nostalgic. I was like, I I don't know why I ever liked Spine Shank, but I went through a phase where I really liked Spine Shank, and I was like, okay. So I automatically liked this because it just took me back to when I was in high school and like I could smell the the, the axe like body spray in the room again <laughs> listening to this band. I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. I just thought about being in a band and somebody comparing my band to Spine Shank and how bummed I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't mean offense by it. That was a big band for like a year. Yeah. <laughs> it was a really big band in like 2000. These guys are nailing uh, the early 2000s industrial sound. They're nailing it. It's what they're going They're clearly going for it. I bet they're Spine Shank fans. Yeah, I think they want to sound like a spine shank or a stabbing westward. I think that's what they're going yeah. for. I don't mind an industrial sound. This isn't the version of industrial that I'm particularly into. Like we've talked about it many times. Like I like a white zombie of it where it's just like kind of a, a weird little goblin man mumbling over the industrial, like them or electric hellfire club. I like that where the singer kind of isn't really a part of it. This is the most popular version of industrial. So they're gonna probably go somewhere. They, we, this sound hasn't come back previously. It existed and then it went away. And I guess now it's gonna, it had to come back at some point, right? 20 year itch, it's a 20 year itch. And with them, it, with this particular song, I think they followed a trend that a lot, we saw a lot of these bands do where they have their pop industrial song. Cause their last two singles were a little more like you'd hear at the Pyramid Club, like playing at like three o'clock in the morning, like which is right. like a goth club in New York City, you know? But this one to me is what you could hear on the radio. And we saw bands do that, like Orgy did that with their cover of Blue Monday. That was a great cover. Oh, great cover, great cover. Even Rammstein did it with Duhas, where that song was a little more like on the German techno pop kind of side rather than the metal side. Yeah, it's got a bit of a chorus to it, this one, right? Yeah, so to me, this one is is their like, this is the radio one. This is the poppier kind of version um, of this particular song. And I definitely, Stabbing Westward, it's so funny because I didn't make that connection until you said it. And that's what's like, oh yeah, totally. Like I could totally see that vibe. My knowledge of industrial stuff is super baseline. So like, I just kind of, you know, I hear like a bit of Manson in there, you know, I even, I even like hear like, I mean, I, I gather they're drawing from the same influences, but I hear like some of the Code Orange kind of stuff, like in, in like the, weird, heavy industrial moments, you know? Um, but yeah, and who knows, maybe they, uh, maybe they really like Spine Shank and they'll be psyched that they got that comparison. Maybe, I didn't mean it as an insult. All right, well, that's it. That's the, those are the albums. That's the episode. This has been Last Words. We did it, everybody. We made it through the whole thing. Travis, where can the people find you? I'm on the old Twitter and Instagram. It's just my name, Travis Riley. Katie. You can find me, Twitter and Instagram, at Merciful Kate. Ben, tell the people about your socials and your new album. Do all the stuff. I have socials and a new album. <laughs> we wrote them, probably. <laughs> I hope we did that. Good job, Ben. Pro stuff. He knows it'll pop up on the screen, his app. <laughs> Please follow my other show, Two Minutes to Late Night, on Instagram and Twitter. On Instagram, it's at Two Minutes to Late Night. On Twitter, it's at 2M, 2LM. We just put out a new cover this week with Alexis Krauss of Sleigh Bells and Ryan Primack of Poison the Well. It's a cover of Rocket Queen by Guns N' Roses, which is my favorite Guns N' Roses song. Uh, it's seven minutes long, but it's somehow not the longest Guns N' Roses song. <laughs> Thank you for watching this show on The Pit. You can follow The Pit at all of the places at We Are The Pit. If there's something we forgot to talk about on the show, let us know in the comments. We're here every Thursday talking about metal 
and aggressive music business. Thank you so much for joining us. We're very glad you're fans. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye now.